It's beginning to look a lot like syphilis. <laughs> Burns when I pee. <laughs> Between those bitches and hoes and sluts, I can barely feel my nuts, and now I can't hardly see. <laughs> What truly makes a man wealthy? Is it money? Well, with production techniques and technology allowing humanity to extract more wealth from finite resources, the concept of wealth and money might be wilting faster than a western whammon's fertility. Aaron Clary's new publication, Sanity is the Future of Wealth, really delves into exactly why common sense has become a superpower. Check it out right now on Amazon, a link is in the description. Terrence Pop here with Darkulous.com, and we have another uh, show of Ride and Roast with two Richards in a car. Yeah, and it's <laughs> almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. Love me some Christmas. I like stuffing stockings, if you know what I mean, <laughs> with my candy cane. Yeah, it's so, all good in the hood. But you know, even though I'm a married guy. You know, and that means that there's a lot of calendar sabotage to do with the holiday. Yes. Oh, you were a married guy once upon a time. You know what that's all about. I'm the one who came up with the term. I know. You can't just get up on Christmas morning and go about your business the way that you normally would because there's kids involved. You got to visit like everybody's damn family. Yeah, you you got to eat three dinners, meet yep. four families, uh, give out 30% uh, of your Christmas budget for just your child to additional children that don't belong to you. Yep. I know exactly what that is. And you have to have the surprise gift yes. just in case you get the wayward soul that shows up. Just in case. Just in case. Just saying. Always make sure that you cook for an army because there's always those people who just don't RSVP and show up anyway. That's, that's right. You need, to kick tw you need to cook 25% more than you're planning. Yes and have room in your freezer just in case it's not eaten. Yes. And as much of a pain in the butt as all of that is, at least I get laid on more than just Christmas, New Year's Eve, and my birthday. Unlike this poor son bitch who only gets laid on Christmas, period. Period. Tingle all the way. I only have sex with my fiance 24 once a year on December 25th. It's his Christmas present, and we got <sighs> pregnant last year. Okay. Anyone so, else think that's a little uh, funky? Okay, first of all, the chances of knocking up a woman. One shot. With one jump over the drop zone <laughs> and, and leaving a paratrooper behind is, is very slim. Very slim. I. I, I don't. I'm just saying that maybe somebody should invest in a DNA test just to be safe. We got a word for that kind of thing back home. We call it suspicious. Yes. Does anyone actually believe, just reading the headline, that her fiance is the only dude she's banging? All right. Now, the only way I would believe this if they're both like 80. But no, 24. No way. And 23, no, respectively. No way. No way. And she is not an unpleasant looking chick. No, she's savory. Like, I, I, would, I would be happy with that. So, yeah, I, I'm not buying it. No. Not, not, you could slap every clearance sticker in the store on that son, bitch. I'm not pulling no. out my credit card. No, no. That, that's, uh, that's bullshit. Bullshit. A mom has revealed she only has sex with her fiancé once a year on December 25th, describing it as his Christmas present. Jen Stevens, 23, from Prestwich, Manchester, imposes a year-long bonking ban, bonking ban, and reckons her man, Rob Walker, 24, appreciates her all the more because of it. That guy is a cuck and a simp. There's no way, no way. The key thing here is she reckons her man appreciates her all the more because of it. There's absolutely no way I would put up with that. Hell no. No. That's just not going to happen. No. I'm sorry. People, anyone worth their salt in relationships knows that schmexy time is the cornerstone of intimacy. When that goes, 
everything else goes. It all crumbles. So you can't have an intimate relationship or a lifelong partnership without it, period. Nope. And a chick who looks like this, I'm sorry, she's not banging only once a year. There's no way. All right, now listen, for the fans out there that have been watching this show for a while, you know exactly my theory on marriage and, and sex. You mean the, uh, the wedding cake inoculation? Yeah, against blowjobs. Yeah. Uh, the, the quickest way to take blowjobs blow jobs off the table is to have the woman's mouth touch wedding cake. And that, those, those are off the table. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of times... You're banging all the time, two, three, four, five times a day. It's all great. The guy thinks, well, I'm going to lock this down. We're going to do this all the time. You get married, then it goes down to four times a week, then three times a week, then once a week, then twice a month, then once a month. And before you know it, it's just on your birthday, Christmas, and New Year's Eve if you get her anally drunk. And what's sad is that everything that you just described is SOP for dudes who've been married for a long time. Yes. This dude has not written a check against this woman yet. They're just engaged. Oh. Speaking exclusively to Fabulous, Jen says, I know it sounds crazy, but this works for us. I, I want to hear from him. I so really want to hear from him on this. The fact we set aside Christmas for sex has actually made us stronger as a couple. We want each other even more now. Uh, um, if you want each other even more now, then guess what? Yeah, you you, you kind of, you start fucking more. Yeah, more than once a week, or once a year. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, 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 no. I'm not, I don't even believe this is actually a I thing. go batshit insane if it's more than a couple of days. Yeah. I, I don't believe it. I think this is baloney, but... It's got to be. It's got to be. It's either baloney or or she is getting trash compacted on, on every ladies' night she has. You know, oh, we're just going to get together and play some Dungeons and Dragons. Never mind the fact that the DM is a six foot two, two hundred pound linebacker named Chad, and I... uh, and he he decides to you know take his dark orc into the Cave of Wonders for a little sightseeing. Tomb of Horrors? The Tomb of Horrors. No, no, I, I, yeah, I think, I think she's the semen sump. A semen sump. Yeah, I think she's a semen sump for whatever comes her way that meets her fancy and not her fiancé. Just saying. We are happy to just kiss and cuddle for the rest of the year. Bullshit! Not buying it. Not, mm -mm. Nope. nope. While most families are settling down to watch the Queen's Speech, part-time sales assistant Jen and trainee IT manager Rob will be celebrating their Merry Sexmas. Get out of here, man. Oh, no way. Bullshit. Oh, you're totally, uh... The pair are parents to the three-month-old Arabella, who was conceived on Christmas Day 2019. Talk about your stocking stuffer. <laughs> but I do not believe for a second that that is his child. I don't believe it either. Jen says, just because we're not bonkers for bonking doesn't make us crazy. No, it makes you a liar. Uh, and I'm, I'm, we're probably, we're pretty deep into this article right now. I've seen pictures of her, the two of them together, and uh, I'm sorry, but does this look like somebody who commands the respect of a woman who looks like that? No. No. No, no, he's a bill pair. He's wearing uh, ripped, je ripped skinny jeans. She's got the tattoos. She's got the thousand peg D stare. And he looks like he uh, sweats soy bullets every time he gets I'm on top of that. She, she just keeps him around to pay the bills. That's it. No, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. I mean, this sex itself makes the anticipation and build up worth it. It's the best day of the year. Why not make it even better? Okay. So the anticipation and build up for one day of the year. Now... What usually happens when it's, it's been a while and then you have all that anticipation and build up and you just go for it? Um, you turn into a pinto dick. You explode on rear impact. Correct. Yeah. So how is all that build up and anticipation worth it? Unless he's, you know, he's buying those over the counter wipes 
you know, like wiping his junk with witch hazel so that it burns and, you know, desensitizes the ever-loving crap out of him before he can ram it home. Or perhaps he's doing a hand load on, uh, you know, on a regular basis. <laughs> a little hand load, yeah. I think he's hand loading. But I'm just saying, if, if they are actually that asexual, they wouldn't be hand loading on a regular basis because you don't need it, right? Correct. I, I don't believe it. I mean, so, you remember when you were in your young 20s, yes. don't Yes. So do I. The lawn sprinkler. Get out of here. There's too many things about this that... I mean, the stars would have to align, double rainbow all the way, the pot of gold, the leprechauns, the, the fucking garden gnomes, the, the, the house elves from Harry Potter. Don't be lies and scoff, Mr. Harry Potter. It all has to come together in one magical concoction for me to believe this shit. I'm not buying it. It has to rain four-leaf clovers. It has to rain four-leaf clovers. Dropped by fairies. I don't expect people to understand our rules. We're doing things our way and don't care what other people think. So you decided to air it out publicly just so you could really try to convince people that you don't care what they think. Yeah. Makes all the sense in the world. I believe it. As long as you're an idiot. Yeah. Come on. Our relationship is stronger for our once a year sex vow and we wouldn't have it any other way. So now it's a vow. It's a vow, yeah. Get out of here. We took a vow of uh, incelibacy. <laughs> what is that? Once a year thing. I wonder what we call that in Latin. Yeah. An annum. Annum. Inu. Annum. Inu. Yeah. Una annum. Una annum. <laughs> I hope she at least shaves the landing strip for him if she's only going to give him access to crack at that at like once a year. Well, maybe he, hit, he hits it 365 times in one day. Yeah, Who maybe, knows? I don't know. And he turns it inside out. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Maybe we're completely wrong about this, dude. Maybe he drops his pants and it's like a kickstand. Yeah. He detaches her <laughs> cervix. He wakes up in the morning with morning when he tries to roll out of bed and he can't because it's pressed up against the wall and he's like, all right, Margaret Thatcher, naked on a cold day. He's pinned in. Grandma, grandma, <laughs> grandma. All right, now I can go piss. <laughs> he just lays it in the toilet while he's brushing his teeth. <laughs> or, or he just has to bend, he has to lean forward and piss in the tub. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Peeing with a boner is one of the greatest tricks God ever played on men. I'm just saying. Yeah, I've been there, man. It's like sneezing at the urinal. Oh, don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. <laughs> oh, 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 shit! My eye! Uh, <laughs> son of a bitch. Hope nobody saw that. And let it never be said that God does not have a sense of humor. The 20 something pair are not alone in valuing old fashioned romance over regular sex. Old fashioned romance. Get out of here. You know, you know what people in old fashioned romance novels like to do all the time? Fuck. Like to, yeah. A lot. Yeah. They do. There's a lot of D to PC going on there. Old fashioned romance, my ass. What are we talking about here? The 16th century? Listen. When people would literally like propose marriage after 48 hours just because they want to get the crack at the farmer's daughter? All right. Now, let's get something straight here. <laughs> all right. Do you think that back in the day there wasn't people doing just as much raunchy crap as they are today you're out of your goddamn mind well you know they had twin beds on i live lucy therefore no sex can ever happen yeah whatever <laughs> yeah, that's right. baloney yeah you know what happens after dark when the kids get put to bed those beds get pushed together no no uh, you know what happens Ricky Ricardo and his entire band get a run, get a turn at that. That's damn right. He has them bring over all their instruments, and then uh, somebody gets to play the rusty trombone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so nasty. Uh, shit, man. An old-fashioned romance was you didn't take her out behind the bar and bang her at the dumb cumster. You just took her in the barn and you got hay in her cooch. That's old-fashioned romance. Oh. Yes. I've seen the Legends of the Fall. I know what's going on. <laughs> According to a recent survey, and you and I both called bullshit on this earlier. Surveys are bullshit. Published in The Guardian. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. That's an a, upstanding bastion of journalism, if ever there was one. That, that's, a, that's a rag. If you can't trust a publication that gives a platform to both Jessica Valenti and Charlotte Proudman, who can you trust? Yep. 40% of 18 to 24-year-olds have never had sex. You know, that I can believe. Because because when 100% of women only find 20% of men attractive, I can believe that. 18 to 24-year-olds, okay. so you, you managed to make it through college as a virgin. 
I've known people like that, so it's all good. Really? Yes. I've never come across that. Well, they're not the most attractive people in the world. Very few times <laughs> I've come across that, and usually I'm, I steer clear. Yeah. Because if you run into a woman who's older than the age of 22, mm -hmm. and she's uh, you know never done any of that stuff, you, you either have totally insane or super religious, or perhaps both. All three or, you don't or, need. Or Mondo Ugly. Yeah. There's always that. Well, you know, that's self-explanatory, though. Yeah. But even then, they, they would still have more luck scoring some tail than the average ugly dude. Like, the average dudes, even top-shelf dudes, will throw a bone to a fatty. Women will never return that courtesy, no, no. matter how much you beg. No, no. We Unless just, you pay for it. Weren't we just talking about that? Like, a dude could walk into Krispy Kreme, see a <laughs> woman who's you know, well put together, and change her life. Yeah. But... Oh, never. Never does a woman go into Krispy Kreme, see a dude, and then change his life. That never happens. No, you will never see a, a independently wealthy woman walk into a Krispy Kreme, and, you know, unless the dude is covered in tattoos and one of them was clearly given to him in prison, then he might she might take him out for a practice run, but she's not going to change his no, life. No, that's not going to happen. No. Nah. She'll, uh, you know, she'll fill a couple of donut holes at the drive through That's about it. Yep. Uh, put a little cream in her eclair. <laughs> Fill up the sour cream center of that, of that uh, fritter. <laughs> <laughs> put a little fruit in a pie. Uh. Put a little cream in a pie. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And here's the other one here. And 6% have sex less than once a year. Baloney. See, that I, that I can still kind of buy. Nah. Because, again, you're talking about the vast minority of the population. I can believe that there are enough ugly people out there to fill a 6% quota. I don't, I don't even try. And I, you know, it, I, 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 And you gotta factor in things I too. I stumble like, into it more than once a year. I, well, I was just saying, you have, to, you have to factor in like people who are horrifyingly disfigured, horrifyingly overweight. That, that'll do it. Disabled. Okay. Mentally handicapped. You factor all that stuff in, you could tilt the balance into like 6%. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I went red pill before it was an actual thing. Yeah. And I, I just basically, you know, stepped back for quite a few years. And I didn't try at all. Yeah, I know you didn't try at all. I, I wear, the, I wear, I have like, you, you, you see me almost every day. The thing is, you set your own death trap when you do that. Because what is the one thing that turns a woman on more than anything? A man with options who doesn't care whether or not he loses her. Correct. So when, you, when you're not looking for it, you're going to find it. And it's weird. Or I mean, it'll find I, you. I should actually do a show on all like, the weird situations I found myself in. Yeah. I think these 6%, discounting all of those other abnormalities that I was talking about, you have enough desperate people... <clears throat> Who, who walk around simping because they're so desperate. All right, they're thirsty. They're extremely thirsty. Yes. And if they come off that way, because let's face it, especially now because there's so many dudes that are raised by single mothers, they just don't know how to talk to women. And the women who do <clears throat> talk to them and try to give them advice, give them bullshit advice. Well, if you don't go to women for advice on that. You I know. Dudes. They're gonna lie to you 100 times out of 100. Yeah, you're going to get some... Because they don't want you to judge them for the advice that they give you. Correct. You go and talk to a woman, unless she really does not give a shit, she is not going to admit to you that, yeah, well, you know, well, I, I tend to give it up most of the time to dudes who couldn't give less than a shit about me. I'm and... sure there are some women out there who don't give a shit, damn, or fuck, but they're very few and far between. Very few, yeah, but... <laughs> Yeah, they might be out there, but we all know that. It's honesty, like that unicorn out there that everyone says that uh, exists. Oh, when, when it comes to when it comes to women and dating, <laughs> honesty is not the first rule in the book. I'm just saying. And when it comes to honesty, period, I have a hard time believing women, for the most part. True story. I, I'm I'm sorry. Maybe I'm jaded. Call me whatever you want. It, I'm just being honest here. I don't lie to you guys. And even if they're not outwardly lying, at the very least, most of them tend to try and rationalize their bad decisions in such a way where it doesn't come off as reflecting negatively on them. So you're either going to get outright lies 
or a twisted version of the truth. A flip-flop maneuver. Yes. Yep. I like it. Yeah. And I love this here. You'll love this. Millennials are blaming work pressure, exhaustion, and a value for relationships over the amount of sex for the flagging libidos. You smell that? <laughs> that paragraph smells like soy. <laughs> For Jen, having sex with her man is the ultimate festive gift. <laughs> she says December 25th has special significance for us, so we decided to make it super special. <laughs> uh, I met Rob in 2017 on Christmas Day at a party friends of mine held. He was studying business and IT at University of Manchester and stayed in the city over the holidays. After the chance meeting, the couple started dating and waited another 364 days to start banging. Yeah, I'm not, right. uh, yeah, I'm not sorry. Yeah, totally, totally believe you. Totally, yeah, totally, totally believe, believe that. You. Yeah, get out of here. So they met in 2017, they probably didn't bang for the first time until 2018. So the second time he banged her, I'm supposed to believe that he Slipped one, by, slipped the one by the goalie, despite on. being a bench warmer for two years. Yeah, he, you know he's riding third string stick. African American gentleman, please. Yes. That's probably who knocked her up. Oh man, don't say that. <laughs> oh. Jen says we got to know each other and wanted to take it slow. I just dated a guy for twelve months and it ended badly. Probably banged the ever-loving shit out of him the entire time, judging from the looks of you. Rob had a similar experience with a previous girlfriend, and he wanted to be sure the next time he had sex with someone that she was right for him. Get out of here. No, no, no. See. He told her what he thought he had to to get in her pants, and then he felt entrapped by it. Well, no, no, hang on. I'm going to be honest. When I was young and dick thinking, I was the master of telling women what they wanted to hear. Yeah. Okay, that was like that's like a basic skill set for for most competent oh, absolutely. dudes. Absolutely. It, it sounds horrible, With, but it is what it is. If there's any justice in the world, this guy was running roughshod while she was out doing the same thing. In January, Rob started a year-long exchange program in L.A., so the pair had a long-distance romance. Bullshit! Bullshit! Boom. She was getting hosed out the entire time he was gone. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. We spent hours on the phone and video calling each other. It made our connection so much stronger. Baloney. There was a dude under the desk. No, listen. I have, I can't, hundreds wow. of guys, hundreds of soldiers in my career sat there and told me about these long distance relationships we're having with high school sweethearts or college girlfriends, fiancés. And Almost. how did every single one of them end? The absolute heartbreaking train wreck. Because they find out they were not the only man on the field. And they find out she, she was getting hosed out, and it usually ended with tears, whiskey, and maybe gunplay. <laughs> Hopefully not the, uh, the, the, uh, the bullet-swallowing kind of gunplay. Well, there's a couple guys made some threats of that. Leave the to... swallowing up to the ladies. Yeah, yeah. Saying. There was a couple guys who threatened that, and there had to be a... Like, Beat down for their own good put on them. Oh my god. That's just the way it goes. When Rob returned home for Christmas in 2018, they decided to spend the day alone and make love for the first time. Oh, it's so beautiful. Get oh, out I'm of here. Cry. I'm gonna cry. Fuck sorry. you. No way. Shut up. Jen says, it was like we did it a million times before. We spent so much time talking to each other, discussing everything from sex to favorite foods. We were intimate on all levels, not just sexually. We don't have to prove ourselves by constantly shagging. Actually, you kind of do. Yeah. You can smell the lies coming off of this woman. Yes. Well, I'm going to be honest. Like, for women, they have to, they have to do it on a regular basis because that's just how they're wired. If they don't, they lose interest. There's no connection. And they, and they leave. Yeah. And, you know, if they've already failed the dick stacking test, that connection is never that strong anyway. So exactly. the, minute, the minute he gets sick or he's not there, she's swinging to the next peg D. Just a week saying. later, Rob proposed on New Year's Eve. Oh, oh that's so beautiful. Sick. So he finally gets to tap it, and he proposes a week later. Sim. Symphony. That's a symphony right there. It's a symphony of crickets. 
But in the new year, he started working for an IT company, spending much of his time traveling while Jen worked full-time in Manchester. Of course he did. Like I said, if there's any justice in the world, these two are running a rough shot on each other. And they both know it and won't acknowledge it. Well, I'm telling you, that dude needs to hit the gym and pray on the altar of steel for a while. Cut his hair down, roughing himself up, he'll have no problem. God, dude, man, I can't tell who the bigger bitch is just looking at these two. Uh, I, I, I look at the picture, I'm like, who do I mail the bra to? Well, yeah, no shit. I think he wears thongs. <laughs> And not the kind on his feet. <laughs> oh, God. She says, sex for us was never a priority. It was all about cuddles and closeness. I told Rob that we should have a sex ban until the next Christmas because it had worked so well the year before. Yep. Right. That baloney. Totally buy it. Yeah, you're getting plowed out like the Catskill Mountains Resort during ski season. Uh, I do not believe this at all. All the white stuff and half the calories. <laughs> he honestly wasn't shocked when I suggested it. We were already engaged, so he knew I was committed, and we thought it would make Christmas extra special. Oh, I'm sorry, Listen. a ring doesn't make a woman committed. Nope. Not, not in the Western world. Even an I love me coat doesn't make a woman committed. Not even four kids. And a woman who looks like this, if she's not getting it from him, she's getting it somewhere else the other 364 well, not, not days of the year. Not even a woman who has four kids with the same guy. Uh, okay, here we go. The pair had sex five times last Christmas and got pregnant as a result. So five times, okay, five day. times in a day. No. I, I could believe no, that. No, I, I don't, I'm sorry. I could, I, I could believe that you could knock a woman up if you had sex five times in a day. But the odds of her ovulating that one time, the second time they decided to do it, no. No. I, I'm not buying it, I'm sorry. That baby is somebody else's. You know, you have what a forty-eight hour window to, to you know, that's put about one by it, the yeah. That's, I'm I mean, not buying it. Some women are super I, fertile. I mean, it's like, it doesn't matter how many times you do it in one day; it's still the same chances. It's like you breathe on them wrong, they fucking get pregnant when they're a certain age. But well, she's right in that to, eighteen she, to twenty-eight. She's in that window. I know, but still, it's, that one day. I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not buying it. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. I'm not buying it, bro. And not a happy it. New Year. Yep. Although she accepts many people won't understand their sex rules, Jen says they're not alone among their friendship group. Okay, now that I really don't believe. This is justification. This is hamster and overdrive. That's well, right. we're not the only ones, so obviously we're telling the truth. Never Baloney. mind the fact that we're not going to meet these people, we're not going to hear from them, we're not going to get their side of the story. We're not even going to hear from the dude. It's pure propaganda. I don't believe it. Bullshit. Yeah. All right, this is English, so bollocks. 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 Bloody hell. <laughs> uh, most of the time I was too shattered to get interested in sex and Rob was so busy with work, we just loved the fact that we had each other. Get out of here. Oh my gosh. No. no Last way. Christmas the sex was amazing and we did it five times. We found out we'd conceived our first child on Christmas Day three weeks later and we were both absolutely thrilled. Three weeks later? <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm not buying it, man. I told you, I'm not buying it. Mm. I think it's complete bullshit. Three weeks later. I don't know how long it takes for a pregnancy test to actually pick anything up, so. Is it, what, five days? I mean, yeah, you, you miss a period, you go and get checked out. Fine. But, uh, yeah, not buying it. Yeah. That's when we both knew our sex ban until Christmas was the best decision we ever made. Okay, so the sex is amazing. Mm -hmm. You do it five times a day when you do do it. Uh-huh. But then it's all not of a sudden so amazing, you don't want to do it again. But you don't want to do it again ever. for another year. Bullshit. No. And, and, you know, oh. and you're, in, you're, you're in your early 20s. We're finally going to hear from Rob here. Oh, okay. What does he say? I'm proud of our commitment in Christmas sex vow. Jen makes me wait, but it's worth it. Boom! He just admitted it. Jen makes me wait, but it's worth it. Yeah, that's it is her call. She is, she is getting ransacked while he is out traveling. Ransacking the sack! I like that. Wow. We're getting married on Christmas Day 2021, and hopefully we will have baby number two by then. 
Waiting for sex makes our relationship special, and I know Jen is going to be my wife. We want to make our own rules. Every single thing that he just said is something that she said. Yes. If this is true, she's pulling all the shots, and she's already getting preloaded before he even gets a crack at the pocket. Oh, yeah. You're so wet. Sure. <laughs> Oh. He's using somebody else's sperm as lubricant. I'm just That saying. is so disgusting. <laughs> that is dis that is oh, stop it. <laughs> Bazooka oh. juice. Stop! Jen gave birth to Arabella on October 2nd this year, three weeks late, after a grueling 42 hour labor. Three, oh, okay. Three weeks late. So she's th three weeks late, huh? Really? Uh -huh. You don't say. Mm. You have any idea how uncommon that is? That's, uh, that's very uncommon. Don't you think it's more likely that she just banged somebody else three weeks later while he was out traveling? A lot of people tend to pull overtime after the holidays. Correct. Just saying. Just saying. I'm not buying it, man. Uh, Usually, if they go more than five days over the due date, they, they start pulling strings and getting stuff going. She says my pregnancy was exhausting. I had terrible morning sickness. No, no, no. What you were, uh, what you were doing was getting sick because of the guilt. Yeah, guilt will do that. We ended up stuck in California, Stan, after traveling there to visit Rob's dad the week before lockdown hit. Rob's job allowed him to work remotely, and I was too poorly to even think about sex. Yeah, right. You're, you're stuck in a place in a, in a foreign country with nothing else to do, none of your friends around. It's just you and your husband. You're already pregnant. You can't get pregnant again, so it's full, full court press full to throttle full throttle press to raw dog the road whore oh, i just I, I just don't want to right yeah Get out no of she left her other boyfriend back home who knows there's more than one that period of time when she got stuck in California stand that was the longest period of time she went without sex guarantee it when arabella arrived we both fell in love with her we both want her to have a brother or a sister close in age so the pressure is on for me to conceive again this christmas no the uh, the pressure is on for you to conceive again this christmas so that you can definitively lock him in as a baby batter money provider till the end of his days i do need to get dna test on with kids man i'm just saying we are both determined to create another Christmas miracle and are convinced our year-long sex ban is one of the reasons we'll be successful. Well, it's a lot easier to create a Christmas miracle when he's not the only one trying to help you create it. If you have more than one person shooting at the same target, mm -hmm. the target's getting hit. Sooner or later, somebody's going to hit a bullseye, even if it's by accident. Yep. As new parents, we're even more exhausted, but we wouldn't change a thing. Mm. I would. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't believe this. This is baloney. I just can't believe it. This is, it's just pure hogwash. It's bollocks. <laughs> it is. I can't wait for Christmas Day. I know Rob's excited too, and the anticipation of finally having sex makes it even more exciting. So just do it. Just do it. Yeah, what the? No way. Uh, once a year? If you actually wanted him, you would just do it. Pure and simple. It's not a, like a saying, and a sports saying, just he, do it. He, yeah, exactly. He flat out, yeah, if you're a Chinese slave labor camp, <laughs> just do it. Rob flat out says, she makes me wait. So he wants to. He wants to. She won't let him. But she's so excited. Baloney. I'm sorry. And I'm not saying that he should hit her, but I understand. I don't, I just don't believe it, man. Rob had better jingle my bells and give me another baby. Did she actually say that? Yes. Get the hell out of here. Oh, man. Jingle uh, my bells. It's beginning to look a lot like syphilis. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. Burns when I pee. <laughs> Between those bitches and hoes and sluts, I can barely feel my nuts, and now I can't hardly see. <laughs> It's my Damn, Christmas carol for you guys. That's awesome. We gotta put BBC in there. In other words, fuck this bitch. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. Oh my god. If oh. you are in a relationship shit, all right, and your significant other tells you that she is pregnant, because only women can get pregnant. And you're only tapping that once a year. 
Or very rarely? Very rarely. Okay, you need to put this bug in your ear right now. When that child arrives, secretly do a DNA test. Yep. Okay, and I, I highly recommend that you do that for all of your children, period. Even if you're banging it on the regular. Yeah, because in today's day and age, you, you just don't know, and, uh, you know. It's psychotic. It's what, $264,000 to raise one child. Yeah. The second one coming on runs you about 180. The third one, 120, that levels out at 100 grand a piece after that. So this guy wants to willingly be on the hook for about 400 grand minimum by this Christmas. Wow. For something he's hitting once, once a year. For something he gets to hit once a year, up supposedly five times in the first day. But remember, out of that entire article, we got one little pink section that was Rob Says. Everything else, we have to take this chick's word for it. And everything that came out of his mouth was almost a carbon copy of other bullshit she said. There is no shortage of crazy propaganda articles like this. Yep. Period. Trying to get men to sign on to the idea of an above average looking, attractive woman not giving them sex and calling it healthy for the relationship. Gee, I wonder who benefits from that, from that narrative. Hey. All I can say to Mr. Rob Walker is. If he exists. He does exist, there's pictures of him. Yeah. Get, get tested. Get tested for the, uh, the STDs, that's SOP of your country. Well, okay, you're right. There are pictures of a man. And that, DNA test that kid. Yeah, there are pictures of a man, kind of man. There's multiple photos of them together. I, I, think, I understand that, but it could be it could be engineered for just the article, because I have a hard time believing this actually took place. Oh, the thing is, though, in today's day and age where OnlyFans has all basically tripled its net worth in less than a year, I don't find it that much of a stretch. Dudes are willing to part with that, that, that one fucking simp who murdered his family because they tried to tell him, stop spending your money on these online thoughts. No, no, no. He mortgaged the house. He mortgaged their house, the house, stole their money. They told him, stop. And how did he respond? He fucking murdered them. That's crazy. If somebody is willing to go that far just to give themselves the delusion of a connection with another human being that they will never touch, this is not too far-fetched. And that is scarier than anything. Yeah, you have a valid argument. I'm, uh, yeah, I, but I don't know, man. I, I'm looking at it from like my point of view. Could it be pure propaganda? Absolutely. Yes. But no matter which way you look at it, it's scary. People oh, are it's... either trying to convince men that this is a good idea, or they already have convinced them it's a good idea. And Neither that... one looks good. If that is true, we're, we're, we are screwed. Yes. The Western world is going down the toilet. Get ready for third world action in a former first world. You know, it, in most situations, it's never too late to turn back. But there is a tipping point where things have to get a hell of a lot worse before they get better. I just pray we're not that far. Uh, me too. Because, you know, I'm not really in the mood for a, uh, you know, day in and day out running gunfight. But you know what they say, hard times breed strong men. And in this country right now, in the Western world in general, strong men are sorely lacking. Oh, so if that's what it takes to bring them back. There you go. It is what it is.